We often hear people say that Brahmins and other upper caste groups in India carry the haplogroup R1a more often. R1a is believed to be a marker of Indo-European ancestry in South Asia. But is this really true? What does genetics really tell us about the link between R1a and the caste system? This is exactly what we'll be discussing in this video, so watch till the end. According to the mainstream step hypothesis, the early Aryans brought the R1a haplogroup with them, and they established themselves as the ruling elite, which later formed the upper caste. But this isn't really true. There are many lower caste groups who have higher frequencies of R1a compared to many upper caste groups. If R1a really marked upper caste Indo-European ancestry, then you'd expect Brahmins and other so-called upper castes to consistently have high frequencies of it. You usually see data of upper caste groups like the Punjabi Khatris, 67% R1a, and certain Andhra Brahmins go up to 55% R1a. There is also a very commonly highlighted group called the Bengali Brahmins, who are said to have the highest percentage of R1a in India, 72.22%, which is indeed a huge number. The fact that the highest percentage of R1a is found in a Brahmin group implies that Brahmins are largely descendants of steppe males who migrated into the subcontinent, right? Well, not really. Kashmiri Pandits, a North Indian, Indo-Aryan speaking Brahmin group, have just 19.6% R1a. Dravida Brahmins of Andhra Pradesh have only 13.5% and they are Brahmins, the upper caste. 13.5% is actually lower than some tribal groups or Dalits. Other Brahmins from the same state of Andhra Pradesh show wildly different results, one of them having 26% and the other has frequencies above 50%. Now we look at groups that are not usually considered upper caste. The Ahirs in Punjab Haryana region score 63% R1a. The Minas of Rajasthan, a scheduled tribe, they score 38%. The Medars of Karnataka have 39% R1a. The Paswans of Bihar are a scheduled caste and they are considered Dalits and they score an R1a frequency of 41%, which is indeed a big number. From this data, we observe that the tribals and Dalit communities discussed here score higher percentages of R1a compared to many Brahmin groups. They score more than Kashmiri Pandits and Andhra Pradesh Brahmin groups. The Ahirs, who are a middle caste, score similar frequencies as Khatri groups. As you see from this data, R1a isn't some clean-cut marker of caste or Indo-European ancestry. It is scattered across caste regions and social groups, showing that the population history of India is far more complex, and therefore saying Aryans came and became Brahmins is a dumb statement based on ignorance. Now let us talk about the group that is often cited as having the highest R1a frequency in India, the Bengali Brahmins. One study reports a massive 72.22% R1a among them, truly the highest percentage of R1a, right? Well, this number is based on sampling of just 30 individuals. For a population of around 224,000, that's incredibly small. Can 30 people really represent 200,000 people? I don't think so. Now I have another interesting thing to share. In the same year, another study studied the same group, Bengali Brahmins, but with a larger sample size of 49. So they sampled 49 people. In the previous study, they sampled 30 individuals, so 30 people. And in this study, the one that I am talking about right now has about 49% R1a. Yes, uh, 49 people were tested and the frequency of R1a was 49%. So which is it for Bengali Brahmins? Is it 72% or 49%? Now let us combine the data from both studies to get a clearer picture. First, we calculate the number of samples in each study and the number of R1a samples next. Sharma et al. has 22 R1a out of 30 samples, and Underhill et al. has 24 R1a out of 49 samples. So in total, we have 46 R1a samples out of 79 samples. Now if we do the math, we now get the R1a frequency of Bengali Brahmins to be 58.2%. This still isn't enough to draw strong conclusions, but it is far more realistic than cherry-picking one inflated number from a less sampled source. We really can't tell much with 30 or 49 samples, but if we merge them together, we get a more realistic value, which is 58.2%. Here's a middle caste group from Punjab or Haryana show 63% R1a, and that's higher than the merged average for Bengali Brahmins. This clearly tells us that R1a is scattered across caste lines, and any strong link between R1a and caste falls apart when you actually look at the numbers. By the way, 
I've also made a video on Kalash genetics, and according to data from a recent paper, their R1A frequency was just 2%. That's right, only 2%. So if you're interested in that topic, make sure to check out that video as well. I'll be discussing more about R1A in South Asia in upcoming videos, so make sure to subscribe if you do not want to miss it. And let me also know your thoughts on this video. Thanks for watching.